This map contains the secrets of the lost legacy. I must find it. It is my final challenge. Nathan Drake will find the lost legacy. It will be mine and I will sell it for a fortune. Ah, here, it must be here. The lost legacy, X marks the spot. I must dig. I'll have to dig with my hands. Uncharted Fort of Thieves End? No. No. It's supposed to be the Lost Legacy. Snooze you lose, mate. <laughs> You're not in this game. Slash dot dash dot slash dot dash dot. Hello and welcome to Slash Dot Dash Dot. My name's Jack. Now I know this is a very late review, but it's the soonest I could get to doing it. And I played the game anyway, and I kind of got some costumes, as you can see, or tried to make a costume. So I thought I may as well get this out anyway. Uh, I've recently gone back to work, and I haven't had t time to uh, do stuff for the channel. But we're back. We're going to be doing some more reviews as we go on later on this year. And right now we're doing The Lost Legacy, Uncharted, the standalone DLC released for the PS4. So going into this game, the first few questions I had really were how was it going to play not having Nathan Drake in an Uncharted game? We've played, well I've played five games with uh, Nathan Drake as the lead character and I just wondered with him not being in this game how that was going to play out. The second thing for me that I was looking out for during the game was how it would play off with it being the female characters. Um, we have had female characters in the past during Uncharted. Of course, Chloe, who's the main character in this game, uh, was a, a large part of Uncharted 2, and she's been in uh, the other games as well. And obviously we had Elena as well in the other games. But predominantly, Uncharted has been... The focus has been around Nathan Drake and Sully. They're kind of the two main characters. So it's interesting that they switched it out and went with two female characters for this DLC. Now, I have been calling it a DLC so far, but actually... It was a standalone, it was released separately as a disc, all in its own. You didn't need the uh, the original game to play it. And uh, yeah, that, that was kind of interesting. It's very much DLC though, it's, it's in the uh, realm of Uncharted 4 and it's a little bit of a continuation of Nadine's story from Uncharted 4. You get to hear a lot more about what happened with her and Shoreline. And uh, that, I thought that was quite good, fleshing out some of the, the backstory of the secondary characters from Uncharted 4. Just a quick side note, especially for the uh, for this channel, Slash Dot Dash Dot, I think Uncharted 4 was the first game that I reviewed, so it's sort of come full circle in the two years that we've been on now to be doing uh, the DLC for that game. So thinking back to Uncharted 4, I gave it an 8 out of 10. I thought it was a really good game and uh, probably the best at the time on the PlayStation 4. Uh, it didn't quite hit the heights of other Uncharted games for me, uh, especially Uncharted 2, I thought that was the, the best one story-wise, that's notched it up a little bit more than Uncharted 4 for me, but with this being DLC, we have to take it in its own sort of way, and we've got to review it in that respect. Now, you get a lot of the uh, Uncharted near falls when you're climbing on the sides of mountains or on the sides of buildings where the main character that you're controlling will leap and grab hold of something and all of a sudden slips, falls down the cliff but grabs onto another part of the cliff or the building. Go on, this way. You sure it's safe? You know, you keep asking me that. It'll save us both some time if you just assume it's not. Oh, oh, oh boy. It's definitely not safe, by the way. This happens a lot in Uncharted, and it's kind of getting a little bit played out now, especially having played, like, six games. I can kind of understand why they do it. It's to make those segments, of the long segments of climbing, more interesting, but 
really, it, we've seen it so many times now, and I was starting to get a little bit sick of it in this one. So going back to the, the point that I made earlier about it being the girls in this, it's, it, the two main characters are Chloe and Nadine, and you only ever control Chloe, which was a little bit of a disappointment. I was hoping that we would get to switch characters somewhere through the game, but that never happened. But what is really interesting to see is that the girls do banter just like the boys. Um, with any Naughty Dog game, you get superb voice acting and a superb script. And that is the case here again. Fraser, need to ask you something. It's important. Go ahead. You and Nathan Drake, professional relationship? Mostly professional. Oh, God. How? How? Hey, you're not one to talk about questionable choices, mate. A salve? And that other one, the trust fund brat? They weren't a choice, they were means to an end. But Drake, he wasn't so bad. I mean, she just thinks he's so clever. Oh, he's incredibly irritating, impossibly so, but he's charming in his own way. And it was fun, while it lasted. That's all one can ask for, I suppose. But I have to ask, did you two take turns talking, or did you just talk over each other? <laughs> Chloe is essentially the female version of Nathan, so if you're ever worried about Nathan not being in the game, it's okay, his female counterpart's in the game. And that's kind of obvious because, as we've seen throughout the rest of the series, Chloe is pretty much his equivalent, and they did have a relationship in within the story. They are very similar personality types, cocky cocksure, you know, witty, doing banter constantly in situations where you, like, no other person would have banter. They would just be super serious, but these two characters are very, very similar. We even get to hear a little bit more backstory about Chloe's relationship with Nathan as the girls sort of chat about relationships and uh, about the other characters in the series, and I, I thought that was good. Basically, this DLC just fleshes out some of the uh, the backstory to the series. Uh, later on in the game we get a similar moment to uh, the moment in The Last of Us. If many of you probably have played The Last of Us, you remember the moment when um, you see the giraffe roaming wild in the university campus and the game sort of stops and it takes you over to that moment and it's kind of like a cinematic, it's a real like uh, good feel moment and you feel there with the characters and there's a similar moment to, uh, to that within this Uncharted Lost Legacy game. I won't spoil what that is, but it's certainly very similar to that giraffe scene in The Last of Us. Now, one of the other key points for me during this game was thinking, how long is it going to be? It's a standalone, it's additional content, it's not going to be a fully fledged game. And usually these sorts of things are like four, five hours, six hours tops. I actually played for about eight hours, so I thought that was really, really good, considering the, uh, the game was like £25 for me. Eight hours is kind of like a standard uh, run through on things like Call of Duty's single player. Of course, those games have uh, multiplayer where you can sort of keep going with your gameplay. And we don't really have that here. But I thought eight hours was like a fine amount for a standalone DLC type game. With that in mind, it actually feels a lot more than just DLC to me. It feels like kind of like a, I don't know, it just, it, it, it doesn't feel like a full game but it doesn't feel like DLC, it's sort of like an in-between from that. So it's well worth your money, I would recommend that you pick this one up, especially if you're a fan of Naughty Dog and you're a fan of the Uncharted series, it's well worth uh, your purchase. We have a lot of the standard uh, cinematic uh, chase scenes, you know, uh, on the bikes and on the cars and stuff like that, where you're chasing after other things and there's enemies on motorbikes around you. Um, actually, to be fair, it's very similar to uh, the moment within Uncharted 4. And of course, it's you know, it's going to be, it's built off of that game, so it, there's going to be similar moments to it. I kind of like the end of the game, um, but it's very similar to another moment in the series, actually from, I think from Uncharted 2. And it feels a little bit like Naughty Dog have done like a kind of a greatest hits thing with the end of uh, Lost Legacy. But it's still really well done and as I say the game is excellent and it's worth your purchase. So we gave Uncharted 4 an 8 out of 10 and I think taking it all round you've got to give Uncharted Lost Legacy an 8 out of 10 as well. Um, it's a great build on the rest of the series 
a nice little offshoot from Uncharted 4 and it fleshes out the, uh, the rest of the backstory and it's got all your standard classic moments from a Naughty Dog adventure game that you basically want to buy their games for. So that's all guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the review, if you did please leave a like, make sure to subscribe to the channel uh, for more great game reviews and we'll see you soon.